other day I was at Walmart doing my usual pain and suffering because Walmart is a place that breeds the kind of people that make me experience this kind of agony. When I caught my eye on a DVD box set of the original Teen Titans TV show from 2003, like a non-sociopathic human, I, of course, immediately bought it because of the amount of emotions this show gave me while I binge-watched all five of its seasons in the span of two weeks, with a particular emotion being felt after the final episode where us fans got to experience a depressive cliffhanger that personally left me in a state of emptiness that I think is what Evangelion fans talk about when they discuss End of Evangelion. After dropping $40 on this bad boy, it got me thinking about another TV show from the early to mid-2000s that I recently binge-watched as well and also included a cliffhanger that we were all permanently left on because the show would soon then get cancelled for eternity. Now, if you know me, you know that I've only really cared about two superheroes in my life. One being Batman, and the other encapsulates a story of a young teenage boy grown up in New York having his life permanently changed because of a field trip and going from a loser nobody to one of the most down-to-earth superheroes that damn near everybody can find themselves relating to. Good old friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I've talked about Spider-Man many a times on this channel, and a lot of the times I'm referencing the Sam Raimi trilogy, one that I hold oh so dear to my heart for being, in my opinion, the greatest incarnation of Peter Parker brought to the big screen in live-action form. Hell, I own the entire trilogy on DVD and Spider-Man 1 on VHS. I don't even have a VHS player, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't know, and I don't care, because this is one of the greatest movies of all time, encapsulated in the most nostalgic form of media playing for a 2000s kid like me. But when speaking about live-action Spider-Man, or Spider-Man in general, the discussion has never been the same ever since that fatal day of May 6, 2016, when Marvel released their movie in their cinematic universe, Captain America Civil War, in which it introduces Spider-Man into the Avengers and the MCU as a whole, played by the up-and-coming actor at the time, Tom Holland, who will go on to be in two more Avengers movies and get his own three solo films. Now, why has the discussion changed so drastically since the introduction of Tom Holland? Surely it's no different from when Andrew Garfield made onto the Spidey scene in 2012. Well, that would be the case had any conversation in 2012 about the webhead include a random preteen appearing out of nowhere to scream how much they want to suck Andrew's dick because of how hot he is, but that, that, that is not what happened. See, a lot of people weren't big fans of the Andrew Garfield movies, and for good reasons. As Spider-Man films... They weren't very faithful when it came to a Peter Parker portrayal, and the movies were rightfully criticized for doing so. But somehow, the universe shifted in 2016. Maybe it had to do with the old killing of the monkey, but being faithful to Spider-Man didn't matter anymore. Now, while he's not entirely bad in his debut, it's when you get into his solo movies where the shit stain that is the Tom Holland portrayal of Spider-Man really starts shining. There are many things in 2017's Homecoming and 2019's Far From Home that are very wrong about Spider-Man, but there's one particular point that has always irritated me, and that is its usage of Uncle Ben. Now, in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, we got to see the origin story of the webhead, which also includes watching Uncle Ben, his father figure, die right in front of Peter's eyes while being held in his arms. In 2012, Mark Webb asked Raimi, Hey, can I copy your homework? To which Raimi said, Sure, but make it different. And that's how we got this abomination of a rendition. But in 2017, when Homecoming was released, there was a lack of a old man death in the movie, to which a lot of people praised it. And honestly... I'm on board with that. It was done amazingly in 2002, we saw what happens when you try to redo it, we've seen what it's like when it happens a thousand times, so giving us just Spider-Man and no origin story was a great choice. The problem is, when it comes to Uncle Ben as a character. Now I'm gonna stop for a moment because I want to bring something very important up. Spider-Man Homecoming was not the first time that a Spider-Man adaptation cut the origin story and the death of Uncle Ben out of its incarnation. And I don't think it was the first time either, but do you remember that TV show from the early mid-2000s that I brought up earlier in this video?
Spectacular Spider-Man was an animated TV series that ran from 2008 to 2009 with a whole two seasons before getting cancelled over legality and copyright issues after Disney bought the property of Marvel in 2009. The show features... I would say lesser known voice actor Josh Keaton as the voice of Parker and also includes no outright origin story of Spider-Man or Death of Uncle Ben up until a certain point that I'll talk about later. With how both adaptations of the character chose to cut out the death of Uncle Ben and show you Peter Parker being Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man nine years ahead showed everything wrong with how the MCU adapted the character with only one episode. In Season 1, Episode 12, Peter Parker is finally confronted with the fact that the symbiote is a bad thing and is causing him to act like a completely different person and even turn his friends into enemies. With this realization, he sets out to get rid of it, which gives us an entire 11 minutes of pure beauty when it comes to the character. Throughout the struggle of fighting with the symbiote, both the audience and Peter are taken back to that faithful day when he was bit and Ben died. Now, yes, this is played out in its entirety, but... It didn't really have to. It could have cut to right here, and everything would still work. And this is where this one single scene starts showing the biggest problem in MCU Spider-Man. While Peter is battling with the symbiote and getting corrupted by it, Uncle Ben intervenes and shows both the symbiote and Peter that it's wrong in saying that Peter needs it. Showing him that Peter has never done an evil act because of Ben. Showing that Peter does have a massive collection of friends and family who care about him, and that he isn't alone like the symbiote is trying to tell him. Now... Why and how does this scene show a big fault in Homecoming and Far From Home? It's just a, at the very least, five-minute scene of Uncle Ben. And isn't the whole great point of MCU Spider-Man the fact that it doesn't show Uncle Ben's death and just Peter being Spider-Man? Well, yes. But, the problem is the fact that while the MCU was getting rid of Uncle Ben's death, they ended up also just getting rid of his character. MCU Spider-Man basically never had an Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben was never the reason why Peter wanted to fight crime. The Avengers were. Uncle Ben is never the reason why Peter is able to solve his conflicts. Everyone else is. Or there's no conflicts. Uncle Ben isn't the father figure that Peter had. Tony Stark is. MCU Spider-Man only mentions Uncle Ben once, and it's in a passing line. May cannot know. I cannot do that to her right now. You know? I mean, everything that's happened with her, I... A line that makes Uncle Ben not feel like the close father figure that Peter had. The man who taught him everything he knows. The man who, even after his death, taught him what it means to be a superhero. But more a line that renders Uncle Ben as just Aunt May's husband. A husband that Peter just knows as yet another uncle. That his death was just yet another family death. And instead... Tony Stark replaces Uncle Ben's shoes as Peter Parker's father figure, ultimately rendering Uncle Ben as a nothing character. And that's where the MCU got this all wrong. Spectacular Spider-Man really didn't need to show Uncle Ben's death, because prior it only showed photos of him, alluded to that faithful day. And because of that, Peter is able to stop himself from making selfish decisions. But in this particular scene, Uncle Ben is there in Peter's head to help protect him from the symbiote. To help him see the good in people, the good in life, the good in being a superhero. To lead him away from the path of evil and show him what he has in his life, and that listening to the symbiote's lies is throwing all this away. Cutting all this out and just leaving this, Uncle Ben is still a staple character in Peter's life and his progression without having the audience watch him die. This scene alone shows the entire point of Uncle Ben as a character. Ben isn't just an uncle, he's everything to Peter. He is the cause of what Peter becomes. Yeah, the spider is what gives him the powers, but Uncle Ben is the sole reason why he uses those powers for good and to become a superhero. So to completely render out his character in a place of Tony Stark is so cool and Avengers is so cool, being a superhero looks amazing, completely ruins the entire point of Spider-Man and the entire character. The choice to not show Uncle Ben's death is a good choice, but it was a bad choice to render his character completely invisible. Uncle Ben didn't die in the MCU, he just straight up did not exist in the MCU. And dedicating an entire scene to showing Uncle Ben still be in the back of Peter's mind while going through a difficult time, crossing between the border of good and evil, doesn't only show you how important Uncle Ben is as a character to Peter, 
But it also shows you the one major flaw and the staple of the ruining of Spider-Man's character in the MCU. Spider-Man is one of, maybe even the most relatable comic book superhero of all time. And the reason why that is, is because Peter is just an average teenager. He's just an average person. And again, to make him empathetic with the, with the readers, I figured I would let him be not that good looking, not that successful with girls. He doesn't have a lot of money. He, in fact, he doesn't have enough money. He's an orphan who lives with his aunt and uncle. I thought that would make him relatable to a lot of kids. The spider biting him was a sheer accident that could have happened to anyone. Hence why there are various people who, in different comic books, become Spider-Man as well. Peter is grounded in reality. Grounded to a point that he can be relatable to the average audience by being a middle-class high school kid. Iron Man's cool, but you can't really relate to a Playboy billionaire unless you're also a Playboy billionaire. But Peter, he's grown up middle-class with his aunt and uncle who become his mom and dad. He has to struggle during school. Struggle during the workforce. Struggle trying to find work in the first place. And Uncle Ben is with him during every step of the way, even after his passing. Because he's held so much wisdom that he passed down onto Peter for him to also hold on to during the moments in life where it seems tough. And by the sheer act of replacing this loving, caring, helpful father of a character with an egotistical, selfish playboy whose only care about Peter is his hot aunt and the bare minimum of making sure he's not dead, making this complete rendering of an asshole the father figure idol in Peter's eyes is the worst thing you could ever do when adapting the character and completely negates and squanders the entire point. That without Uncle Ben, there is no Spider-Man. Watch him take his vengeance. I should drop you. Take what you took from Ben Parker. <gasps> but he wouldn't approve. With great power comes great responsibility. And that, kiddo, was only the beginning. Anytime, kiddo. I'm always here.